You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. Alex is going to be coming back to the show and interviewing the author of Robopocalypse beginning in the next segment. There's just a couple more news article uh, items that I want to go over first. Of course, there's the push in many, many states. I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's 20 something. I think I want to say 29, but I'm not sure of the exact count. But all across this country, we have movements in state legislatures that are pushing to take away our informed consent for vaccines because of measles, okay? This is a childhood disease that I had, as, as we've mentioned many times. Parents would uh, send their kids down to get measles because it was a very, very low uh, mortality rate for measles. Nevertheless, because of that, they're using that to push for mandatory vaccines to take away our informed consent. And um, this is, we've had several bills that have been pushed back on. North Carolina, they just had the sponsors take it down. And listen to what they said. I expected to get pushback. And I expected this bill to change, but unfortunately, the pushback was so great that I lost control of it. This is someone who was trying to take away our informed consent. This is someone who was trying to force us to have things injected into our body, regardless of whether we agreed with that, regardless of whether they had our consent. That is a fundamental hallmark of tyranny if you take away people's informed consent for medical treatment. And, of course, it was also taken off in Washington. In the Washington bill, the person who put this forward, who was a sponsor there, was a pro-choice, as many of these people call themselves, many of these uh, uh, Democrats who are sponsoring these bills. But, of course, in North Carolina, it was joined by uh, a couple of sponsors who are Republicans as well. But the people, for the most part, are calling themselves pro-choice. But they don't want you to have a choice about the medicine that you put into your child or the medicine that you put into yourself. They're going to force that on you. The only choice you get is whether or not you're going to kill your child. But how you're going to treat your child, how are you going to educate your child? None of that you get a choice in if they had their way. But, of course, people are pushing back on this. Now, it was interesting, too, in the Washington case, the uh, senator was also a doctor who was pushing this bill. And she had exercised her informed choice. She is an MS patient. Uh, she was on interferon. She had a child. She wanted to breastfeed. And, of course, the doctor and the pharmaceutical company both told her, you need to get off of that drug if you're going to be breastfeeding. She did research. She talked to people. She decided that it wasn't a threat, that it would be safe to do it. So she went against the advice of her doctor. She went against the advice of the pharmaceutical company. And she continued to take her medication. She exercised her informed consent. But she wants to deny that to others. She also had to pull back on this particular bill. And listen to what this lady in North Carolina said. She said, parents, however, should talk to a medical professional about this because we do have a high opt-out rate in Buncombe County, and that does create cracks in the shield of protection that we have. In other words, that's this uh, uh, herd mentality that they've got, this herd immunity that they try to say uh, is necessary. And we've debunked that whole idea of herd immunity many times. Quite simply, if you don't have it for individuals, you don't have it collectively either. And it's a safety as well as an efficacy issue. But she said, however, trying to mandate vaccines was a step too far. Yeah, a step way too far. And there's some people there that are watching this closely who believe in it. If you're in North Carolina or if you're in these other places, don't think for a minute that they're not going to come back. You may have defeated them right now, but the price of liberty is eternal vigilance, just as Patrick Henry uh, said, as Alex was reading in the last hour. Some of the people in North Carolina said, well, we've talked to one of the sponsors, Senator Tart, a Republican, and he has an open health care bill that can be amended with new language. And withdrawing his support of SB 346 is not the same as, as withdrawing the bill and its contents. When asked if he would pull the bill before its reading, he says, I have a record, recorded quote of him saying, that's not going to happen. The bill's not going to go away. I was just talking to Cliven Bundy last night on the nightly news doing an interview and as we we're talking about we saw the people stand up as a community to tyranny and as Cliven Bundy points out every time people do that 
the government backs down. They did it with the vaccines. They will do it if you stand up. That's why the information war is so important. Stay with us. Alex Jones will be right back talking to the author of Robopocalypse. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Secret 12 is a binary of nutraceutical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. The experts are clear. Sunlight, purified water, healthy non-GMO food, and having a good attitude is essential to a healthy immune system. But I go further with Super Nascent Iodine X2 from InfoWarsLife.com. 50% stronger than our original and revolutionary nascent iodine formula, coming from a deep earth crystal source that no other supplier has. Most other forms of iodine come from seaweed in areas plagued by Fukushima and other contaminants. Not our iodine. It comes from over 200 hundred million year old crystal salt deposits and is tested and proven to be completely pure. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today. See the informational videos. Read the information there compiled. And for a limited time, when you use promo code NOW at checkout, you get an additional 5% off the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products. Secure your Survival Shield X2 today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Listening to an InfoWars.com frontline report. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. We live in a time of unparalleled change, of evolution, of accelerated developments that will alter the future course of humanity forever. Genetic engineering, robotics, accelerated computing. IBM, the same company that ran the machines in the death camps with the ID numbers on the Jews and others deciding how long to work them, how long to let them live, they now run the computers at the VA deciding who to put on the do not treat list. For me, we're already in a robo crisis. We're already in the middle of incredible change. And the architecture of this system is being built to where humans will be obsolete. And I didn't get that from my own perspectives. Look at these headlines. Washington Post, uh, just a few days ago, Apple co-founder on artificial intelligence, the future is scary and very bad for people. Here's another headline. European killer robots pose danger to international stability. Autonomous drones. Skynet. In the robotic near future, most will, quote, live off government-provided income because robots will make humans obsolete. And that's, of course, what was written 15 years ago by Bill Joy in Wired Magazine, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. 
We have the author of Robo Apocalypse joining us via video Skype. That's being made by Steven Spielberg right now. His newest project is sci-fi survival script for Lionsgate, produced by Brad Pitt. He also, of course, has another popular app, Deep Space, a speech recognition gaming app. I've got a lot of questions I want to go over with him. But humans tend to understand that we're losing our humanity watching 10 hours of TV a day. It's linked to degeneration of our brains, early onset of Alzheimer's. We know that people can't do basic calculations now because of calculators. So much of this that has empowered us has also dehumanized us. And you read Ray Kurzweil and others' writings, they just say humans as we know it are obsolete. So it seems like that decision has already been made. Now, are, uh, are these views that he puts in his books uh, something that he's actually worried about, or is it just uh, art for our guest, author Daniel H. Wilson? Thanks for coming on, Mr. Wilson. Hey, thanks for having me. There's so much to talk about. Uh, you're a pretty young guy, but you've written some best-selling books that are really good reads. Uh, what is your worldview on all this? Where does art uh, intersect with life? Well, I think... First of all, it's worth mentioning that I started out as a scientist. So uh, when I was in my 20s, I earned a PhD in, in robotics and artificial intelligence from Carnegie Mellon University uh, at the Robotics Institute. So now it's been 10 years. I'm just, a, uh, I'm just a science fiction author, but I really come from what I'm writing about from kind of an informed perspective. A place of knowledge. Yeah. And so, you know, with Robopocalypse, I have to say, first of all, I'm not worried about that actually occurring. But I did set out to depict what I considered to be the most likely possible uh, robot uprising scenario that could occur. So it's not robots that come from the future. There's no time travel. There's no, you know, uh, aliens from outer space. It's about uh, uh, mass malfunctioning of autonomous vehicles. It's about, um, you know, an, a an AI using our data against us, using our, our cell phones against us. Um, the personal assistants that are on smartphones now. So stuff like that, I was projecting out into the near future. But, um, but as, it, as it actually stands, I'm, I'm pretty much an optimist when it comes to all this technology and its impact on humankind. I personally am not worried about AI autonomous machines taking over, but if you look at the big corporations and governments, they're weaponizing them day one, and already through the smart technologies are social engineering, controlling, predicting mass movements. And so as a novice futurist myself has been talking about this for 20 years, we see the architecture of the NSA and the rest of it. Uh, really creating a monopoly of information. That's my concern, is what humans will do with this digital web of the things of the Internet. Yeah, you know, I think, I think humans don't change. You know, human beings are, we have some fundamental things that are always going to be the same. We love our families, we eat, we sleep. Uh, but now we live more and more of our lives through our technology, right? So we're using our technology to kind of do the same stuff that we would always do. We're using it to communicate with other people. We're using it to, uh, you know, to transportation. And we have these autonomous vehicles to get us from one place to another. Communication, utilities, all the stuff that we used to do slower and in person, you know, now we do it faster. We do it through technology. And I think that that creates a lot of potential but it also creates, you know, a lot of potential for uh, for misuse. Absolutely, I mean, sure, because so much of our data is out there. So much of our daily lives, you know, there used to be sort of an equality and an anonymity, right? Um, you know, when I was a kid, if I left the house, I just was I left the house. You know, I was I was out there just anonymous like anybody. Um, and these days, you know. Well, those days are over, right? And, you know, now every every move is tracked, and uh, for better or worse, we're constantly each of us just hemorrhaging a stream of data out into the universe, and uh, other people are certainly going to use that data for for various purposes. Well, I hope humans just don't become some vestigial barnacle growing on the technological terror, to quote Darth Vader, that we're constructing because. My grandfathers, especially my dad's dad, knew how to fix combines, fix trucks. They were designed so a human could fix them. Now it takes computers. It takes technicians. Yeah. I mean, we're having basically the world taken away from us, and we're building a world where we're obsolete. And that's what most of the billionaire tech company owners have been saying for more than 15 years. Are you familiar with some of the warnings of Wozniak and, and, and Bill Joy and folks? 
And yeah, Elon Musk, Stephen Hawking, I sure am. But but I have to say, so I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. My dad 